Good morning, I'm Kara. Thanks for joining me today on Power to the Flower, my Zone 9 gardening channel. It is February 23rd, and I thought it might be nice to just have a little walk around my garden. I hope that it's um, inspirational for you, for those of you in the warmer climates like we are here in Walnut Creek, California, just to give you an idea of what you can be growing through the winter months and still bring a lot of easy, beautiful flowers to your area. So let's just get started straight away. Okay, let's start here with this simple table topper. So this is an easy way to bring color to your yard, in my opinion. I purchased this little jug at a craft store. I drilled a hole in the bottom of the jug and then I filled it with soil. Um, and then what I like to do is just put cuttings in from the succulents that I have around in my garden. Now, if you don't have any succulents in your garden, there might be some in your neighborhood and you can ask your neighbors if you can have just a little snip. I mean, you don't need much. You just need the florette or the part that looks pretty. And only, a f let's see, how many do I have here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I think that this is a really easy way to put a table topper together. So literally, you just cut the succulent and you set it on top of the soil because the succulent then goes to work trying to make roots um, into that soil, it stresses the succulent. And that's how you get really beautiful colors on some succulents. Our coldest temperature, I looked it up today, was in January, and that was uh, 24 degrees Fahrenheit. So most succulents, you should check, like when you're at the store, if you're purchasing some, um, just look it up, Google it really quick and see what the coldest temperature that the plant can handle. But a lot of succulents can handle our temperatures. And actually, since this is their growing time, this is the time they're really looking their best in the winter. So it's a really fun plant to use in our zone nine gardens. All right, let's go on and have another look at another pot. All right, so this is one of my favorite areas of the garden. And I put this together in November after I had learned that I had colon cancer, um, but before I went into surgery. And I'm so glad that I did because after surgery, I was able to really admire this area. And then also I had something to do. I would putter down here and deadhead plants and pull leaves out of the pots. And that gave me kind of it really was the whole classic gardening is my therapy situation. So as many of you know, I was diagnosed with colon cancer on October 23rd. I put a little video together in November kind of talking about it and the shock of it all and what was going on. I then went for um, a surgery in December on December 10th, a huge abdominal surgery. It was done with a robot and um, after they took out like 10 inches of my sigmoid colon, they removed the cancer, they removed a bunch of the lymph and the blood vessels that went to that area. And then they looked at all of that under the microscope and found that there was no cancer involvement anywhere outside of the, the tumor that they found um, during a colonoscopy. So that was amazing. I was staged at one and need no more um, treatment at this time. I'll just be following up with CT scans and doctor's visits and blood tests over the next five years. So I am ecstatic as you can imagine and I've actually taken a lot of footage to talk about this extensively and as time has gone by I just feel like it hasn't really worked out and so I just wanted to follow up and share with you the great news that I am doing so much better and my body was really, um, I mean, it was hard. I don't know, it, I, this is part of the reason why I haven't put the video together. I could go on and on about how difficult it was, but the fact is that God has been very kind and we've had a ton of support. And um, I really appreciate all of your kind words and all of the messages that I've received from you. So thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm doing a lot better and I'm just kind of getting back into it, you know, like just getting back into my game. And that includes my gardening game here in my own yard. I've had to put my consulting on pause and I do hope to resume that one day, but at the moment I just feel very weak. The surgery was bigger deal than I really anticipated and my body is just 
old maybe and I'm slow to recover. So um, it's been a couple months now and I'm starting to feel less pain and just a lot better in general. So I do look forward to the day when my consulting can return. But for now, we can just admire the plants in my yard and I can keep making YouTube videos. So this is one of my favorite window boxes. Let me show it to you. So as you can see, the Aeonium Angelata love this space. They have done very well here. I think they've grown, at least they've doubled in size. Um, these were all, all of these plants were used in a table topper, a kind of a long narrow one that I put together in October and then I, or maybe September, and then I switched them over into this window box, hoping that this could be a longer term home for them and they clearly love it. As I uh, mentioned when I did this, the window box is actually self-watering, so there's a water reservoir down here, but because the succulents don't actually have very long or deep roots, I think it's it's working out fine. Also, the Aeonium seem to be the ones that need the most water, and I'm hoping that their root system will grow down and actually benefit from the self-watering container. So let's see. I'm going to remove some of these, what are these called, petals? No, these long leaves. Um, from the bottom of these so that they look a little bit more like trees and it allows us to see under at the plants that are growing underneath. So just quickly to review with you which plants made it through the winter and did really well. This is Necheveria topsy-turvy doing great. These little beautiful yellow aeoniums are called aeonium kiwi. They, when they get a little bit of sun, they their edges turn pink like they're kissed by the sun, so cute. Um, I added in some, I think it's called Tradescancia or Purple Heart. These made it through the winter and I just took cuttings of them and put them in the soil here. I think they're gonna do great and add a little bit of contrast. Here's a close up view of the middle of the window box. You can see my sunburst Aeonium right there, a couple pansies. Here's another Echeveria, I think it's called Lipstick. And then next to it is a sedum dragon's blood, which isn't loving its life. And I'm wondering if that's partially because it's in so much shade underneath that Aeonium undulatum. So we'll have to rearrange that a little bit. Also, the purple heart there in the middle is loving its life. And then I also have a jolly green Aeonium in the back. Moving right along to the other end of the window box, I have some more Aeonium Kiwis, those beautiful yellow flowerets, another topsy-turvy, some more Transcantia or Purple Heart cuttings, and then a little bit of Dragon's Blood right there and some pansies. Overall, oh, and there's a lipstick Echeveria. I love this window box and I'm so happy with it and how it turned out over the entire winter. All of these plants just grew and put on growth. So as I think about the winter season and which succulents can really handle 24 degrees Fahrenheit, these are the ones that I would bank on. You know, so I'm sitting here editing this video and I'm just realizing it's getting so long. So I'm gonna stop it right here and just call it a winter succulent garden tour. I hope it was helpful for you in terms of thinking about which succulents you could use in your garden to bring you some year round color, especially through the winter months. And I will be finishing this garden tour on Friday. So I hope to see you then. Otherwise, I post videos on Tuesdays on YouTube as well as Facebook. And I'm always on Instagram and Facebook during the week. Thanks so much for joining me here on Power to the Flower, a Zone 9 gardening channel. See you in the next one. Bye.